uh, we're over to Elaine for Compassion in Action. Thank you, Reverend Sarah. Uh, today, we're so fortunate to have um, someone who's been mentioned several times already today, uh, Thomas Wade Jackson. He's an extraordinary voice for compassion. Um, he's a filmmaker, a musician, and an animal activist. And his 2019 film, A Prayer for Compassion, um, it's a film he created with our own Victoria Moran, helped give birth to where we are today, this Compassion Consortium. So welcome, Thomas. We're always so glad to have you here. Oh, it's such a privilege and honor to be here, and especially with all my friends. And I love that I could make it here today. Thanks for inviting me. Ah, uh, well, we're, we're grateful. Um, you have several projects in the works. You have a docu-series, a short film, and a CD on the way. So let's talk about your new docu-series. Uh, it's to be released in early 2003, I believe, and it's called Compassion in Action, Bringing the Elixir Home. In that film, how do you explore compassion? Well, you know, basically uh, it picks up where we left off after Prayer for Compassion, literally, like we're in the woods singing the song that we ended the Prayer for Compassion with. And it just takes us on the journey of taking the film, film around. We start with the preview at the first Vegan World 2026 uh, get, or gathering. And, you know, so, and then from there we go on and on and uh, take the film I get to go back to India for three weeks and we get to go all around the United States and Melody gets to go to the London premiere and in Scotland and Paris. And so it's a lot of fun. And uh, also along the way, we get to explore uh, uh, animal sanctuaries and uh, visuals like pig visuals. We went, got to go to that in marches and demonstrations. And, um, and I got to explore different topics with people that we met along the way. Uh, I got to talk about um, effective communication for activists with uh, vegan psychologist Claire Mann, and uh, and I got to talk. Uh, one of the things I didn't get to go through, or we didn't get to cover in a prayer for compassion, that I always wanted to explore was self compassion, because it's such an important thing. So um, in the docu series, we get to talk a little bit about self compassion, self care, and. Uh, Melanie Joy talks a little bit about that ritual, I think, speaks some. And so uh, we see examples of compassion and uh, there's not a it's really like there's I don't think there's any main any kind of uh, graphic violence other than I go. I did go to a wet market in India. And uh, so there's a little bit there, but it's not like, uh, you know, we really try. I mean, to me, it's like it's a love letter to activism and activists. I met so many amazing activists along the journey. So I wanted to give something back to them like that sings their praises and also gives them maybe some tips on um, how to communicate and really how to take care of themselves. Because I think activists tend to put the purpose ahead of self-care sometime. And uh, I think that makes us a, le a little less effective. So aside from living uh, a healthier life with self-care, how does that compassionate self-care help change the world and activism? Well, you know, I think uh, there's on several levels. I think on the first level, um, I have a belief that we're all connected, that all things are connected, that there's an energy that runs through all things. And so when you are taking care of yourself and you're meditating and pray, you know, edit, uh, exercising and sleeping and getting good food and all of these things i feel like your energy level is is um your well-being your energy level is is a lot higher and mm -hmm. you're open to to uh, you make the world around you better because we're all connected but also you become open more to your creative connection and to your divine purpose and guidance i feel like and so uh, i feel whatever you're here to do by taking care of yourself it makes you more effective at it. And um, and it seems like you're taking time away from it. It's almost like when you go to exercise, you think, well, it's gonna take energy to exercise. Well, it builds energy. And it's like when, you're, you, when you exercise that creativity and that, and all of those things within you, when you take time to, to do things that feed your soul, you know, um, it comes out in other ways and it allows you to be more present when you go back to whatever that work is, to whatever the activism is. And I think, uh, 
that's the other level. And the other, the third level, I think, is that it, it's an example for others. I think whether the person's vegan, not vegan, whatever, when they when they come around someone who has an energy and they're comfortable in their skin and, they, and they're loving and they're kind, it really, uh, they feel it. And, and it kind of uh, inspires them. I mean, we really don't know, you know, who we're inspiring and who sees. I mean, there's been so many people in my life that I don't even know. Like I saw them do something and it affected me and I changed my behavior. And then, I, you know, later on the road, I saw somebody notice me do it and change their behavior. So you just, I think it's important to realize we don't know who we are uh, affecting. So the more we take care of ourselves, it'd be a good example um and the better we feel the better the universe is going to feel that's kind of my answer it's beautiful so one final question thomas um what can one person do today in their own version of compassion and action to make the world a better place or well an action that that truly makes the world a better place what can one person do uh if there's one action i would just say meditation would be the first action because it basically for me, if you start with the meditation, you find the guidance to lead you to the other actions, you know, but uh, if I would go a little further, I would say self-care and self-compassion for the reasons we talked about and also making time to do that thing that feeds your soul, that's creative, that I know you feel you don't have time to do, but your heart's calling you to do, and you don't see how it's connected to your purpose, you know, and all of these things, I, I feel like even if it doesn't look directly connected to your purpose by following that it leads you so you just open so many doors of creativity and i feel like the answers and the change that's going to happen is going to come through creative you know through our creativity through our imaginations and uh, breaking because we have to we we have to shift the world is shifting you know it's, it's warms my heart to go to a store and see so many vegan options growing every time I go and realize that, you know, these are not all vegans. These are people who are pre-vegans that are becoming more and more open to it. Well, thank you, Thomas. And let's hope there's many more on the way. And thank you for your time today. Yes, thank you.